What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for ClickHeads. Game breaking bugs, esports, and balance news. We've got a lot for today's news roundup. Getting right into it, it was found and shared on Reddit by Twaze. This completely map breaking exploit that allows Reyna to plant the bomb inside of this crate using Dismiss to plant the bomb in this buggy, inaccessible location. This spot has been abused by Omen teleports and the like before. Seems to be a particular bugbear for Riot to have to deal with, and here it is rare its ugly head yet again. In order to fix this problem, Haven has been disabled from competitive queue while they ship a fix overnight. The devs say that the map will return into rotation as soon as they're confident it's been fixed. One problem that has been recurring as well is the crouch headshot bug, which is sometimes debated if it's either a hit reg issue or a visualization issue. Either way, Electro on Reddit shares off a montage of this problem coming up in his games. This was a problem that was admitted to be an issue. The crouching issue specifically was mentioned in the most recent patch as something that they're dealing with, but more so for the visual feedback you get on these suspect hit reg issues these are always kind of difficult to decipher precisely because visual indicators of games are not necessarily synced to the hit scans of the weapon themselves it's a little bit more obvious when the gun mechanics in shooter games are projectiles because then they are synced in fact as their physical objects in the map and as far as i know that's not how the bullet mechanics work in valorant but if we see any progress on this from the developers kind of clearing this up we would be sure to keep you guys informed just note that these can present issues in your game and remember if you like these news updates videos be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come out they can be sent directly to your cell phone by clicking the bell so hook it up and don't miss out next up valorant's most recent blog post goes at length to describe how they balance valorant which gives us some interesting insights into how they make the calls on what is overpowered or not and what direction the balance state gets pushed into some interesting takeaways from this article, they state that they do use data, but more importantly, they rely on human judgment to contextualize the game data because chasing after a perfect 50-50 balance results in robotic and formulaic design, which I completely agree with. Instead, they rely on some core design philosophies of the game, and first and foremost, Valorant revolves around what they call the tactical cycle, where you start off with gathering intel, then a plan or making decisions on how to act on that information, and then the action itself. Important notes in these three stages are determining the positioning and the specific agents you're going up against in those spots, calculating the territory you own and what you need or what you want to go for, and then timing all of the abilities and shooting in order to make an action on that. Interesting note, they say that it's important that this loop happens for every player at every level of play. And I think that's really evident in the design of the game where so many agents have very straightforward access points to what otherwise would be a bit foreign for the lower levels of Counter-Strike, for example, where you pretty much need to know some complicated lineups in order to engage in a lot of that strategy, whereas that exists in Valorant 2, but there also is a lot more straightforward routes to getting that utility exchange going. They go on further to explain their balance radar of how they go about perceiving something being out of balance. They have a flowchart here that breaks it down further, but in general, they combined the data with the sentiment of feeling of playing the game, whether it's fun or not, and ultimately check it up against their tactical loop that I talked about earlier. One controversial example is Ray's, where they go at length to explain how she's justified in this paradigm of ideas, and they explain how they went about tuning her back a bit. Now, at the base point, they believe that a character like Ray's doesn't interrupt the tax cycle, as Morello has said on his own stream, that her abilities are something that set up those fights and are engaging in that utility exchange of flushing players out or gaining ground and yes they can get kills but so can mollies and shock darts and other things it's just that Ray's possibly has the best abilities that can get kills but the intent of that is to work in that tactical loop of intel and planning what's more they go on to look at the specifics of the problems that Ray's had where having two nades off the rip was just too much kill potential that went into her ultimate 
meaning that she just got way too many kills with all of her abilities, but also players were not reacting to the counterplay cues of her abilities, which caused more frustration. There's always that hidden element in all of this where players knowing or not knowing how to utilize or counter specific things in a game is always going to skew any data that they receive. So there's always a design route that they can go to try to address that. And they did that with Rays, where they drastically changed the audio of her ultimates fire and equip in order to really inform the enemy that they need to vacate an area, as well as changing the grenades to only having one, but being able to reset on kill. This required you to be a lot more careful with your nades, but also kept the character fun for the players playing her and continually be able to stay true to the identity of the character. So now from like a two-pronged approach, they conclude that her win rate took a bit of a hit, but the perception of the character kind of radically changed now that you feel like maybe with a combination of players learning how to outplay the things that she does, as well as have more information to work with, as well as her just having a higher skill threshold required to use her abilities properly rather than having two nades to spam right off the rip. I think these are good things to keep in mind, especially as the next agents come out. Keep in mind that based on comments that Morello has made continuously on his streams, the new agents might get pretty wacky. He's already confirmed that there's more agents like Rays, which perhaps we might call a flusher or just straight up damage dealing abilities, but perhaps more importantly that the design of agents are going to be a bit more creative and further away from the CSGO tax shooter core that it's built from. Speaking of the new agents, I wanted to make a correction. I accidentally said that we should expect the new agent in September. I can't do math. I did YouTube because I was told there would be no math involved. But actually, two months from the start of June when Reyna came out would mean that Act 2, as well as the new agent, new battle pass, should be coming out in the first week of August. So I'm excited to see what design space that the developers take these agents. They're gonna start to stack up pretty quickly every two months, I think. I've already seen a, quite a bit of criticism online of the kind of the frantic nature of two month periods with new agents, perhaps being a lot to handle. I certainly would say I think that's the fastest that they can bring it out, but some are worried about the competitive integrity aspect of it, where we want this to be an esports game, of course. If agents come out that quickly, especially if they come out really strong, we can almost fall into the Overwatch effect where the power creep of the game is so rampant that a new hero can just completely redefine the whole game. Now, Valorant is a little bit more immune to that because everyone uses the same guns, it's attack shooter, different format and everything, different game entirely, but perhaps even comparing to League of Legends maybe is a better example, but I'm less familiar with that. Either way, two months seems kind of fast, but I personally don't mind it, but I also want this game to be further from CSGO. I like that direction that they're going. I think a lot of players will be upset though when the game begins to enter a bit wackier of a space with more raises and reinas and that style agent being added and less of the traditional tax shooter elements being emphasized. But let me know how you feel about that in the comment section down below. Perhaps I'm just content starved because Overwatch decided to take a year off adding new content. So maybe that's just me. But I did want to also chime in about the T1 Nerd Street Invitational. There was a good write-up on ESPN giving a recap about some of the major takeaways of the event. The one thing that I'll note, of course, is that I think a lot of attention is focused into the NA space right now. Perhaps rightfully so, it's got the most orgs invested. We're of course in the West and wanna watch games with English commentary. However, I wanna warn everyone that there's a good chance that other regions will be better, if not now, eventually, as we have seen South Korea dominate any game that they put their mind to. And of course, famously, the EU region dominates CSGO for the majority of it, at least when Brazil isn't the best. So I think we're gonna have to wait for the state of the world to correct itself and us to get some international play going on with lands and physical events rather than just online. But alas, this is what we have for now. So let's talk about the T1 event. I thought it was absolutely great. It was for sure the best tournament that we've seen thus far with a lot of full teams properly competing now. TSM are easily the best team now. I was saying it a couple weeks ago and I felt there was 
quite a few naysayers out there after they lost Twitch rivals, though, with Myth as a stand-in for Hazed. They played them so close that I was confident, especially after they went on to dominate the events in between, that TSM were number one, and they did, in fact, dominate the opposition, especially on a few maps. With either a combination of Wardell playing Jet or Wardell playing Sova, they're setting the standard for operator play, but I think the unsung hero in TSM's success is a combination of Hazed, who I assume is the shot caller, I think he was on CLG for a number of years in CSGO, and Drone, who is their Phoenix player, a character that everyone but TSM and a newly converted like myself has belief in. Their use of the agent as well as Hayes shot calling, I think, is just baffling teams how to play, whereas the number two team, T1, plays in a very passive, safe, defensive way. TSM have the ability to kick it up into an entirely different gear, with very fast executes, sending drone in in an aggressive way that no other agent can, but also having a lot of variations on shot calls, which makes them basically unstoppable on the attacker side when they're playing Haven. I believe their record something like 10 and 1 on the map recently. They have every variation of a strat that you could want, and their understanding of the utility of this game, as well as their teamwork to run in together, means that you're just not holding a site. There's three sites to go. They're going to mind game you. They're going to outstrat you. They're going to out-execute you, and I think teams have a lot of catching up to reach that point, and that's the most important storyline for me right now anyway. Teams are going to have to adapt and learn from them because I think they just understand the game in a different way, but with that, I'm going to leave the rest of the article for you to dig through if you want to know how popular players like Hiko, Tenz, Corey, Sinatra, and even Ninja fared in the event. All of them playing pretty well, even if their teams didn't perform too well. Last up, I had a fun thing to share with you. This is a clip that went viral on Twitch. None other than Soldier Boy made this discovery 30 minutes into his stream. Uh, oh my God, my mic has been on mute the whole time. Oh my God, y'all can't hear. Oh my God. Hold on, bro. Y'all can hear me the whole time, bro. Bro. Y'all can't hear me the whole time. Not the whole time. Bro, so y'all, hold on. Y'all ain't hear me say nothing. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Y'all ain't hear me say not one thing the whole time. This y'all first time hearing me talk. Oh my God. This y'all first time hearing me fucking talk. It's okay, Soulja Boy. Every content creator goes through those growing pains. It happens to the best of them. But now you have to know that anyone that goes into his stream is going to be trolling him and telling him his mic's muted like they do to Tim the Tapman all the time, even when it's not. So enjoy that for the rest of your streaming career. But that's it for today's news roundup video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next one. Click the bell to actually get notifications sent right to your cell phone of when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter, hit us a follow on there. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for Clickheads. We'll see you guys next time.